Good morning and welcome to this virtual bridge session. Um, today it's something which is close to my heart and that is portfolios and specifically around Mahara and I'm pleased to say it's a virtual bridge regular Jamie McNee from University of the West of Scotland that's going to be delivering today with the interesting title uh, I wouldn't have got I would have I'll try that again I would have got on with it if it weren't for that pesky interface. So to Jamie tell us about that pesky interface. Um, yeah I mean this is um, the, the, the kind of audience we've got, I might have to be careful of because we've got a few Mahara experts here. Um, this is obviously a presentation designed to, for those who are put off by the, the daunting interface of Mahara. Uh, they, they want to use an extra e-portfolio tool or, or whatnot and they, they get kind of scared off, which is maybe appropriate at Halloween, um, with uh, the interface of Mahara being too clunky or uh, too overwhelming and they think they've got enough to do with the tools that they've got. And that they don't really see Mahara as being a, see it as another vehicle for assignments rather than uh, obviously an e-portfolio tool in the, in the, sense, the true sense of the way it's used. Uh, so just talking about good practice and encouraging users, driving up the, the user base So and what changes hopefully could be made. But I definitely would welcome questions as we go along and suggestions because um, it's a small community of Mahara users and uh, that's part of the, the, the reason that it's, it's not as successful as we, we hoped it would be. Uh, in, in the kind of sector is that there's that kind of lack of user base and it's good to kind of talk about ideas. Right, um, so I will share, I've got a, a suitably spooky Halloween themed account, um, which is Jack O' Lantern. Um, so just a basic, this is the kind of run through for those who are unfamiliar with Mahara, um, as to how it appeared to, to a student. Uh, now, at like many places, we use a, a tool called Mnet Authentication, which will be nothing new to, to the Mahara experts here, which means that you sign on using your Moodle credentials, which it saves the, the daunting aspect to having another set of credentials to use. Um, the, the one kind of piece of feedback I've had in certainly previous institutions have been, I don't know how to get into Mahara, I don't even know my login for Mahara. Uh, so, well, we kind of sorted that one out for you because it's, it's a single sign-on link. Uh, through whatever Moodle platform you happen to be using, uh, you click sign on with my login to Mahara and it will single sign you on. Uh, and that's that kind of argument out of the way because you, you're in and you're, you're, you're cooking at this point. So obviously you've got the, the portfolio page that's similar to, to Moodle within Mahara. Um, you've got these three um, tiles which appear uh, less hidden to, to new users. Uh, and provide shortcuts to the same functionality, which is mirrored up here in the, the dashboard menu. Um, but what I'll do is I'll run through the, the basics of creating a portfolio for those that aren't familiar with it, um, and then show how that will appear. Um, so obviously the, there's two options when you're creating, you can either create through the, the bubbles, as we call them here, or you can do through the dashboard menu, and you can uh, use the create drop down here. Uh, always advise usually to create a collection first of all, which is essentially a folder of pages. So if you go into pages and collections um, and you want to add uh, and you choose to add a collection, that will allow you to group your portfolio pages together. Um, so if we call that uh, spooky stuff, uh, and then obviously give it a description, it's self explanatory. Uh, Um, and then that's basically as much as you need for a, a um, collection to get started. So we'll go, go ahead and do that. Um, so then you want to add pages. Now you'll see I've already added a, a page here, uh, just a demo page. So we can add that if we want to do so. Just now we can create a new page. Um, so we'll add that page in. And then we'll go back to a portfolio. Uh, I'll do it on first. Um, so you've got your, your spooky stuff and then you've got that collection as you go in uh, and you've got your pages here. So I've created a wee demo page here, but I'll show you how to, to do that from scratch as well. Uh, so you've got that in your, your collection. And um, when you're adding a new page, uh, do so here. Um, and obviously get page in that instance. Um, so we'll call that uh, spooky stuff too. This is really just a demo how easy it is to get a, a page up and running. It's, uh, I mean, it's it's daunting to many users, but it is just if they, they're used to using social media and other cloud-based platforms, it's it's the, the fields are relatively self-explanatory. You give a description, 
was fixed uh, there. Um, and then uh, obviously a customized um, options here to uh, display name, etc., which most of the defaults will be fine. Uh, so we create that in here. Um, and then obviously the, the each stage, I mean, Mahara used to be uh, obviously the, the navigation style is very much this hamburger menu type options and you could drop downs and things and it's out of sight, out of mind, we find for a lot of people. Mahara used to have tabs across the top where it'd be portfolio files, etc. And people were more comfortable playing about essentially, and not just students, but academics as well. Were more comfortable clicking something if it, if it looked quite obvious what the function was. Um, but obviously you've got the, the ability to add here. So it's, it's, it's still semi-intuitive in that you've got an add button to add content. Um, so obviously position top and bottom, I'll do add a block at the top just to show how that would be for a typical user. Uh, and we want to have that as a text block. So uh, Halloween activities. Add a text block. Um, Uh, and it's as simple as that to get a text block in. Uh, and obviously it's drag and drop. You can quite, uh, quite WYSIWYG type interface. You can move it about here uh, and do various uh, things like that. I'll show you an image as well, just for, for good measure. Uh, so add an image at the top. Um, they've improved this quite a lot in recent versions of Mahara. Those that have used Mahara for a while you may remember that you used to have to go into the files tab and add that asset separately and then you had to then embed that in the portfolio which meant one of the common issues we had was that students were sharing the individual files and not the the artifact uh, portfolio and uh, artifact embedded in a portfolio and um, but they've kind of obviously seen the other ways and uh, I'll do it uh, we'll just do that uh, and then obviously you've got the, the ability to add image here. So previously you used to have to add it from site files that you'd already uploaded, which confused a lot of people uh, because oh, there's no files there. How to, so they, they couldn't make the link between obviously forward user guides, but people in frustration often try to skip steps. Uh, so now you've got that browse option, which makes the world a difference because then you can go in and you can add from there. Um, as you do with many systems, you can even tweak the width um, I know for, for memory that image is, is pretty suitable the way it is. The retractable bit is just basically whether you want to uh, collapse the header when you're viewing the page. Um, I'll do that for this one just so you can see uh, the difference. Uh, so we we'll add that in. Well, Jamie, whilst uh, that's happening there, I'll um, just relay from Gordon the uh, the plug, not so cheeky, you know, we uh, plug for the online Scottish Mahara user group. And uh, in the chat pane, you'll find the link to the user group. Yeah, I dropped a connection there, apologies. So it's, it's muted when I come back in. Uh, so when you, you go into that view menu, so I'll show you that just again. Um, so those that obviously familiar Mahara, this is nothing new, but you can view the portfolio here, uh, and obviously because that's quite so we can do that. This is just a, a simple run through at this stage, but it shows you just how quickly a, a user can build a portfolio. Uh, so you can add various pieces of content in there. And um, the way I used to describe it when I was describing it to new members of staff who were opting to engage was that Moodle is controlled by the, the staff and Mahana is controlled by the students. Uh, for instance, the, the, the prime examples used to be the media and film department. So we'd have a, a project to record a piece of film and they would record it, obviously in the nature of e-assessment, they would put every piece of content on here. So they would have uh, permits from the council to record on, the, on the, the council property. They would have equipment checklists. They would have uh, health and safety checks, things like that. Plus images of the, the, the set and how the, the equipment was set up. And then they would have obviously right down to the final embed YouTube, private YouTube link of the, the, the video file that they created for the film. 
on there, as well as maybe theatrical makeup and things like that. Um, so that they can control as, like, well, as, as much as they want. And you can see how modular Mahara is. In terms of a Moodle assignment, Alexa may be prescribing that only one piece of content is to be submitted, uh, one file upload, for instance, and, and what date that's to be submitted. Whereas, obviously, in Mahara, the, the, the student has got full control over how much or how little they, 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 they submit. Um, obviously, you've got that activity choose a menu where I had that there. Uh, you've got more functions than you, most people would, would ever use, but there's, there's all these options available. Basic text, image, and files to download are the, the obvious candidates. Uh, files to download is very similar to image. Of course, it's the case where you add uh, that and instead of adding it to an image, you add it as a, a downloadable file. That could be a, a Word document, a PDF, etc. Um, try to move this one down the way. Uh, and then obviously just uh, save that. Um, so again, you've got that file to download, uh, just a file attachment. Um, so as it's, it's the, the title of this demo was how daunting it is, but I'm hoping to prove that this is really quite intuitive, um, especially in recent versions of Mahara. Uh, they've made some improvements based on feedback, which is obviously uh, quite good in, in terms of improving the platform. Um, I'll show you one of the, the kind of common mistakes, uh, which has actually been included in the Mahara guide uh, recently, is that people will go into, we've had this uh, in the past, whereby they'll go into their dashboard, uh, go into their share area. Um, but, Essentially, sharing these, these trying to share these profile of dashboard pages or, or customize these pages as a portfolio. And um, we've seen people doing that. I mean, it's not entirely wrong, but if you customize these these dashboard or portfolio pages with content, then the, the, the options to share as documented Mahara are a bit restricted. Um, so it's just that people come on, students, new members of staff, and students come on to this platform and they kind of where they start, it's and Moodle's just more intuitive, and that's what in terms of interface um, puts people off. Um, but to show you the example of sharing, it is um, so we've got that basic portfolio built up, and uh, there's a comments function there. Uh, we want to go in, obviously, to edit that. Um, let me just see. Uh, the, the sharing option is under here, so you get the share option. You can do that from the main page to share any content as well. Let's move that out of the way. Um, so, for instance, you would do a share with it. The default way that we do it is obviously if uh, they're sharing with their, their lecturer for comment, they would click user and they would type the lecturer's name in. Uh, I'm not going to do that here because that allows you to see the, the, the names in terms of GDPR sense, but I can show you uh, the portfolio that we've already created. Uh, Uh, which is that spooky stuff one. And go in there. Uh, and you can see that I've created a user called Peter Pumpkin, which is the, the lecturer in this instance. Uh, so it's shared with, so you can obviously you can, you can select different roles for, from what you want to share. And you can select a, a, a date range essentially. Uh, and, and that's it, the main mechanism that we use. In terms of internal assessment, the, 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 the secret URL is basically, it's, as it suggests, it's a URL that linked directly to that content and allow only people with the URL to see the content. And many users have found in terms of academics, it's not the wrong way to do it, but they found that was a quick and cheap way, quick and dirty way to, to actually share content. So they were just telling the students, go, and, go away and create a portfolio and, and then just create a secret URL and email that to me. Um, and some was doing it as a, a text-based submission in Moodle, whereby they would create a secret URL and they would just do the Moodle assignment. But there is actually, there's a, a method called Mahara assignment for Moodle, which is a more integrated way of doing that. But for to get up and running, to, to get a basic portfolio going, uh, that is an option that you can use that. And certainly, we, as I say, we use that for external assessors where they don't, uh, they don't have to be members of the groups, etc. They just want to be able to share that secret URL. Uh, so I've clicked the secret URL and hopefully that'll do something in a minute. It's going particularly slow today. Let's 
pressure at the age of 26. Yeah, so do a new secret URL and then we'll leave the page to do that. Uh, so it, it generates that kind of URL. You've seen that potentially in other systems. Uh, and you can copy that. Uh, you can obviously edit um, the dates in terms of when you want to share it. But that's something that I wouldn't discourage use in terms of external and internal verification, whereby you just want to share um, with a, an external user, external to the group, external to the, the delivery of the, the module. Um, you can just simply copy and paste that, um, and it basically will take you to the uh, takes you to the page like that, and it takes you into the view mode. And you can see, obviously, you can add comments based in in that. Um, but the the comments feature is uh, particularly useful um, for just candid feedback from the lecturer. We found Mahara, the, the, the positive feedback about using Mahara in a health and social care setting was that um, the lecturers described the students as disappearing when they're on placement. And uh, if the student, different students will be doing different activities on placement and wanting to showcase different pieces of content. So uh, I can just show you that. So if a, a healthcare student, for instance, is on placement, they'll be doing different things in different placements. So they want to add different, they'll have different experiences that want to showcase different uh, individual uh, journeys through that course. And obviously the, with the, the function for the lecturer to add that summative feedback, uh, it looks good. You could, uh, and just simply adding that feedback in quite quickly. Um, so that's how we obviously how Mahara can be used in a formative respect to the student can then feedback and the student could say I had difficulty with this. It can open up a bit of a dialogue and then once that's they've agreed the lecturer will give a piece of formative feedback of the nature that I believe they are now ready to submit this piece of content. Um, there's a submit option when it's set up which is basically it's a, a drop down menu where they submit and they agree I was just kind of had that bit in terms of obviously GDPR. I'm just conscious of what I'm sharing on my screen, uh, but that will give you a submit button similar to this. Um, and then you can obviously submit that piece of content for assignment. And what that does is as opposed to a share is it locks it down. Um, so obviously that's nothing new to those that have used Mahara They've, uh, without even touching on things like blogs, uh, journals and things like that. Um, but what I'm really looking at is just to get a bit of feedback and to, to show those that are new to Mahara how easy it is to get a simple piece of content like this up and shared with the lecturer. So you've got that piece uh, that, which has been shared and then obviously how it can be enhanced in ideas in terms of this is before we even touch on templates. Um, I mean, you can check, the student can then check the shared, shared by me. Uh, they can check the shared that so it's spooky stuff that's shared with Peter Pumpkin. Uh, and they've got a secret URL attributed to that. Uh, so that menu in the portfolio, the share menu is also got shared by me. In terms of lecture, they can view shared with me and they can view their student submissions and they can filter that as well. Um, but again, you can see how, how powerful the tool is, but um, how um, it's not entirely intuitive. And I'm just looking for a bit of feedback as we go along. If anybody's got any feedback so far, is there anything they want to see in this demo, for instance, or anything? Further that they, they would suggest customizing. Well, we do have a few comments and questions in there. So, are you ready to go to comments or questions? Yeah, me too. Can I quite feel as I go along? Yeah, yeah certainly. Um, okay. Um, well, I think I'll first go to um, uh, going back up there. Um, Ali has asked about the take up within your institution of Mahara. How does it integrate into uh, the course development across the institution? Um, I'll, I'll probably have a better place commenting where I was last because it's um, where I was last. Obviously, at West College, it was um, it was historically used for a long period of the time, uh, and it, it, it dwindled off. So it was generally kind of creative subjects like hair and beauty, uh, media, uh, and health and social care in terms of uh, evidence of placement. Um, I've been at Borders as well and seen a similar, uh, Borders was using Moby Construction, which is an interesting point of view for the, the practical work. Uh, where I am just now, it's, um, it's a case that they're trying to encourage use of it. Um, it's not as widely used as we'd hoped, but we're, we're obviously trying to push that a bit further and, and encourage that uh, rather than 
uh, make it worth its while, or if it's not worth its while in terms of investment, you know, drive more people to use it. If it's a bit of interest in health and social care, um, for that same reason that I, I showcased what we've done before and showed them example portfolios uh, from previous health and social care settings, and they said, you know, that's definitely what they want to do. They want to see what their students are up to. Um, and I think it's, it's just about running through. We had the resources pre-merge of where I was, and we used Mahara quite extensively at pre-merge at Clyde Bank College, whereby we would do Mahara inductions. We do a Moodle and Mahara induction. This is how you get logged in and whatever. Um, and subjects we knew would be using Mahara. It was it's quite a, an invested uh, session, whereby in Moodle, it's just how you get logged in. Here's some basic content in Moodle. But Mahara, we were really talking about, here's how you do each step of the process and create your portfolio because at that time it was quite clunky and daunting. Um, we've had what you might call misuse of the platform as well and uh, not using it to its full potential. And uh, lecturers will say, right, okay, yeah, you go into Mahara and you submit your assignment and then they would expect the assignment to be submitted at a certain date as per a Moodle assignment. And they would say, right, put all your content in a, a PowerPoint file and upload that by this date on Mahara and then share it with me and submit it by that date. Um, and obviously because that, file will be a PowerPoint file or, the, the, for instance, it was hair and beauty images, uh, haircuts and, and makeup jobs that they'd done throughout the, 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 the period of time. They put that all into one PowerPoint. The nature of Mahara is that you share individual content, but things like that had arisen because staff are put off by the fact that, for instance, some things are simply sharing the, the wrong page or, or sharing a file instead of sharing the portfolio. Um, but when you encourage Mahara, it's about ongoing feedback. It's about being able for the lecturer being able to go in and, and add that feedback, that uh, formative feedback, uh, uh, just as quickly as that, and just go through. Obviously, they can go into the shared with me menu, um, shared with me, uh, and then you can see a list of the students that the, the students who have shared content already, and then they can go I wonder what so and so is doing on their placement. They can go into that placement. They can see what experiences they're having. Um, and again, it's it's a bit confidence for the student with Mahara. A student may not want to say to the lecturer and, and, and feel uh, self-conscious. I was taking blood from a, a, a service user today and I, I think I did it wrong. I left this bruising or whatever. And well, uh, you know, you can feel they've been, been questioned about it, but they're quite free to, to put that as a, a kind of journal essentially on Mahara and say, here's a photograph of the evidence of what I did today. The lecturer can add that feedback and and it is, it's, it's an open um, environment. What well, obviously one of the other options, if you're sharing a portfolio, well, obviously I'll show you that in there. Um, we have uh, what you might call oversharing. Uh, so in terms of that shared menu, there's an option to share with um, groups. Uh, in terms of groups, we get stung by previously as for the Students Association with a group of all students and things have been shared with, with all students. But even in registered users, you can share with the entire uh, population of Mahara, uh, and, uh, which means obviously in terms of especially, I mean, it's not so much in terms of assessment, it's, it's moderate risk, but in terms of health and social care students where they've got details of service users and things like that. And really one of the tweaks I'm looking at, I'd, I'd have done it previously, but I'm looking at doing it again in this institution is customising that menu to, to be normally the options that you're likely to use. For instance, taking that off, um, either by uh, appearance, tweaking CSS, etc., or by a more robust means. Uh, but you've got all these sharing options and the ability to overshare is all, all too tempting, uh, all too easy to, to make that mistake. Um, obviously, you've got your groups as well. Even just sharing with the class group, it's um, that's something that's useful in terms of uh, peer review. But many academics aren't quite too keen in, in content being shared among the, the general populace of the class. Uh, so it's about what options work best for the organisation. If it's not likely that they're going to be using peer review, either restrict that completely or lock it down. And I think this is hopefully a good uh, opportunity with the Mahara brains that we've got in the room to, to seek ideas and, and, and look at how other people are sharing and what they're restricting, how they're managing that. Over I think with... One quick question. I think it's on pretty much that. If we could ask Kenji, he's made the point about uh, asking about teamwork. Uh, would you like to ask that one to finish up the formal session? Yeah, J uh, Jamie, I just wanted to know um, what your thoughts are around 
promoting Mahara as primarily a teamwork tool and how easy it is for students to collaborate? Um, it was actually proposed, interestingly enough, at the previous organisation when we were looking at an alternative for a student intranet solution for the Students Association. Um, so obviously it's got that peer review option whereby you can share as an ongoing basis, you can share with the, the, the group. And I think that the answer is, can it do that? Yes. And I think the bigger question is, should it do that? And I don't see any reason that if you know it's managed well enough that it, it, it shouldn't be you know suited for that role. Um, it's it, that it's an ongoing to it's a feedback where they can share the students are used to share on social media for instance they can share with that group they can they can discuss and they can get feedback from their peers i think um in terms of managing it it would potentially be they would have a, a piece of portfolio whereby they would have one that was open to sharing and then they would potentially have one that was for, for the final assessment so two portfolio pages a group portfolio page and a, and a an assignment portfolio page similar to a group assignments on Moodle and obviously um, obviously the final submission, for instance, turn that in. I think identifying the use, the right tool for the job is quite key in that respect, whether it would be obviously a, a, a group activity or whether it's a, a formal assignment. Um, but it's obviously how you manage that in a pedagogical sense. I know what the tool can do, but I'm just looking for a bit of feedback, uh, especially when in terms of Moodle, you've got all that expertise in the room and in the organisation, but in Mahara, it's a case of, you know, people are saying, well, tell me what it can do. Well, this is what it can do, but, but should it be doing these these functions? So, I mean, it's certainly powerful enough for group work and, and it can do that, but it's how you would implement that. And just a quick follow up to that then, do you see any potential for Mahara to link in with MS Teams? Because so many institutions now use Teams as a comms channel and to have a portfolio system linked in with that seems to be useful for teamwork. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, if that's the direction of travel and certainly if that would allow Mahara to be more visible and more in the public eye in terms of insight and in, in something that they're aware of, um, obviously, how it would be done, I don't, uh, I'm not aware of, um, at the moment how you would achieve that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why not. It's, um, it, it, it's people have been using, for instance, OneDrive as a as an alternative to Mahara, um, even before Teams came into place. We had members of staff that were just telling their students to upload the, the portfolio files to OneDrive and then share it with them. Uh, because they they were kind of seeing Mahara as a as a tool for a repository for sharing files, similar to, to Moodle being a, a, a repository for content is a, a kind of stigma. They were seeing, oh, you know, you just go into Mahara, you upload a file and share it with me, rather than that ongoing feedback option and building up that portfolio in different stages. Um, but I think if if it was if Teams is complementing it rather than replacing it, then I think that would be quite useful. Well, thank you very much for that. And that brings us to the end of the formal recorded session. Um, for those who are watching the recording, then please do try to join us in the live session when you can. With a big thanks to Jamie for making uh, the interface less pesky and um, for uh, some clarity as to how it might be used. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll wrap up this virtual bridge session. <laughs>